everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Live with your hosts, Ben and Rob. Have alien jellyfish invaded our planet or has a real life probe drone from Star Wars been found? And speaking of Star Wars, do you like Mandela effects this week? I actually found a new one in Star Wars that might just blow your mind as much as it did mine. And I still haven't seen it yet, so I'm looking forward to hearing what this is. Also, a new giant 10-foot-tall alien creature was also spotted, this time in Brazil. What is going on? The alleged prophet, Baba Vanga, made predictions for 2023 and 2024. So let's look at the past year and see what's supposed to come this coming year. And China's once again threatening Taiwan. Between all of this and our top 10 weirder news of the week, there's a lot to cover. Yeah, so join us for all of this, plus a Rise.TV exclusive Q&A segment, and we'll see you out on the edge. And if you're listening to our Edge of Water podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or elsewhere, please leave us a five-star rating and review to help us reach even more people. Also, remember to like, subscribe, follow and uh, on Rumble, Ganjing World, uh, YouTube, X, Facebook, wherever. Everywhere. Please. Everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. How are you doing, Rob? Good. You good. How are you, Ben? Yeah, doing pretty well. It's been, I'm excited. A, it's been a busy week. Yeah, it has been. I'm excited to see what the Star Wars thing is going to be. Yeah, I'm excited to show this to you and see if you remember what I do, because this mm -hmm. is kind of like... I don't like to just call things Mandela effects. So when I saw this, like I was just like, this is ridiculous. Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, we have some things to start out with, I guess. Funny prank. Yes. What's this? I think Lindsay or Dom found this for us. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would definitely freak me out, man. <laughs> Weird. This has been a perfect one around uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, would, uh, yeah. Totally. That maybe this is where it's from. I think if I saw that, I might get shocked, and then I would be like, "Oh, this is a prank." Like I'd know right away. All right. She All just right. said, is, is it supposed to be doing that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, we have What's something this? about Mercury. Using red dye to demonstrate that Mercury can't be absorbed by a towel. That's really weird. You know, I have something weird to tell you about Mercury when we're done with this. If you're listening to a podcast, we're looking at uh, scientists put mercury into a bowl. Then they squirted some red dye. They're mixing it together. They're trying to mix the red dye into the mercury, which seems like it's working a little bit. A little bit. Not doing a very good job of it, though. Yeah. And then they just put a towel in there. They put a paper towel in there, and they're trying to soak up the liquid mercury. And it is mm -hmm. it's soaking up. Happened. It's only soaking up the, um, the red dye. dye and not any part of the mercury whatsoever wow so you know i for some reason stumbled upon this the other day oh wait wait we should probably go over this if there's a mercury spill in your house do not wipe it with a cloth or towel mercury is not absorbent so this spreads the mercury and breaks it into smaller pieces never use a household vacuum cleaner or shop vac to clean up mercury <laughs> Darn. like so <someone laughs> trying to suck it up oh man so what did you what did you what come across? do you do then what do you, it didn't tell us what you do how do you get rid of it uh you may have to call somebody i mean it's supposed I mean, to be very toxic but yeah like poisonous well okay yeah. so what i was going to say is I, I was doing some research um somehow and um the you know old alchemists of of your uh, of of yesterday came up and like how they were trying to turn metals into gold Mm -hmm. And apparently the easiest of the metals to turn into gold is mercury. Mercury is is almost has almost the exact same structure of gold, except it has like 
one extra thing added. So if you were to molecularly change mercury just a tiny bit, it turns into gold. I had no idea. That's that's crazy. That is, that's really weird. Yeah. Huh. Very cool. Well, I got a, I got a, uh, you want to play the Bendela effect opening? I don't know what to play here. Yeah. <laughs> Should put you on the photo. Yeah. <laughs> they did. Perfect. All right. So there we go. Ben, do you remember uh, in Star Wars and New Hope, Lindsay, don't pull anything up yet. Yeah. When at the in the very beginning of Star Wars and New Hope, Princess Leia gets captured. Everybody knows mm -hmm. this. This is not like a, a spoiler alert, because I assume everyone out there has seen Star Wars. And if you haven't, shame on you. <laughs> OK, so Princess Leia gets captured. Right. And she's kind of like she gets brought in front of, I think it is Grand Moff Tarkin and Vader a couple of times. Yeah. Later, later in the movie. Yeah. Well, it's like about halfway through, maybe something yeah. like that. Like she's brought in front of them and she's talking to them, right? Yes. The entire first half of the movie where whenever she has a line before things start to get crazy with Han and Luke. So as soon as Luke starts to capture her, all of a sudden her voice changes. You, okay, you mean now, you rescue her or not capture her? You rescue okay, do you her. Remember, her? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. When Luke rescues her from being captured. You remember that scene? He like, yeah. he jumped. She's like, oh, a little, little short for a stormtrooper, right? Yeah, and, and he and, takes and, off his helmet and he's like, I'm here to save you or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. Everything before that, she is speaking with a British accent. And yeah. everything after that, she's speaking with an American accent. And the no, British no. accent never friggin' happened, dude. Because I used to listen to her all the time talking and be like, like, I, I just remember her speaking so clearly in an American accent. And I even remember thinking, like, she has a very clean accent. It's not because C-3PO had a British accent, right? Because she's not she's not she's not British at all. So yeah. why at the beginning was she speaking with a British accent? It makes no sense. And then her voice changes. And okay, then in the wait. previous two movies, she's not speaking with a British accent at all, ever. Can we hear this? The more you tighten your grip, Tuck, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Will somebody get Did this you hear big that? walking carpet turn that out of the way? Can you turn that up? <laughs> That's as loud as it gets. The more you tighten your grip, talk, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Will somebody get this big we'll walking carpet out of my way? And then she's all of a sudden... You tighten your grip, talk, Listen. The more star systems will slip through your fingers. That never happened, dude. Yeah, it's and it was weird. It was more lines than this. It was like, I, I remember just the last time it was on television or whatever, I'm watching it and I'm going, what is going on? Like, what planet am I on? Like, she never had a British accent. What What was, oh, okay. I see an ad popped up. I was going to say, what's the headline of that? Can you hit? Yeah, there you go. There are a lot of sites that wow. talk about this. That is really weird. I, I'm sorry. She Dude, always had I, I don't American remember her accent. speaking in a British accent whatsoever. Like, what would be the point of that? None, especially if they planned on just changing it when she got halfway through the film anyway. Because the She's rest of the film. She was nervous. So which, is, you, which is a possibility. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. So you're an American. And when you get nervous, you speak with a British accent. It, that makes I, even less. Sense. I do know somebody that's kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, no, that person that you're talking about doesn't qualify for this conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that is so freaking weird. I, 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 you're right. You're absolutely right. I, I would have never would have no, guessed like, that. Like, even, even when like, you mentioned it, I'm like, she doesn't speak in a British accent. Like, what are you talking? Never about? did that to me. I like. I watched this movie so many times. So many times. It just I don't know she that. was asked to put more emotion into her line delivery. So it turns so you British. speak with a British accent. That's all putting that's emotion to, to to General uh, Tarkin, right? And he's he's a British actor, so maybe that kind of rubbed off on her. I have yeah, no but idea. even his accent was kind of clean in this. Mm -hmm. Like it was it was slightly ish, it's very but... proper British, but not too much. Yeah. yeah, that's so weird, man. I, you're right. I've no no idea on this one. Wow. Yeah, 
I, I would have never, um, that's really weird. Someone wrote in the comments, they said, I, I do remember the accent and wondered why she was doing it, but I never thought anything about it. That's really weird. I don't know. That's weird. That's I never really remember weird. that. Well, you know, um, kind of going off of the, uh, the Mandela effect with the C-3PO's leg, you know, I actually, I found this recently. Oh, oh, snap. It's all yeah, gold. From 1977, he doesn't have a silver leg. So Every, why was everything a couple of years ago a silver leg and now it's turning back to gold? I don't Well, that's so it's super weird because we, like in, it, it was just in Star Wars. Then it happened in Empire Strikes Back. Where then I was like, oh, my gosh, he actually has a silver leg in Empire Strikes Back. Now he has a silver leg and Return of the Jedi. And he never had a silver leg in Return of the Jedi. So, I mean, in none of the action figures, he had silver legs. Now, the newer ones that are produced, some of them do. Now, this is another sticker from from like 1980 or, 19, or actually from the original Star Wars, somewhere between 77 and 80 prior to Empire no silver leg. He doesn't have a silver leg either. Wow, right that's there. Return of the Jedi. No yeah, silver leg. Yeah, and he leg. does have a silver leg in the movie, hundred percent. This is weird. My mind. This is from '83. It says. Yeah. That's gold. It's, yeah, because he didn't have it for sure, and and we even talked about it on one of our live shows in the early days because we showed a clip and we're like, yeah, here he is doesn't have a, a silver leg and return of the Jedi. Now I went back and watched that same scene that, that we showed. No, unfortunately the video doesn't exist because it got deleted on YouTube, but um, he does have a silver leg now in all three movies. So it's super what weird. is going on in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually like, Joe Rogan timelines. covered it. Joe Rogan covered the Mandela effect recently. Uh, and it, it was, a, it's a viral clip actually. We'll have to show it. Of course it is. It's yeah. So it's, it's really cool. I mean, and it's about the cornucopia with the, uh, fruit of the loom logo. And there was a video of a girl yeah, just dude, totally corn. freaking out about it. And Joe Rogan's like, what is up with the Mandela effect? Really? And, um, he's like, you know, are they changing things? Is something going on? So yeah, the, this one really, really got me too. Dude, and, the cornucopia and, was always in there. Yeah, for sure it was. And the Fruit of the Loom company responded because of the viral video. And they said no. And they showed a history of their logo. Never had a cornucopia. And the girl found a shirt, an old shirt from the 80s with the cornucopia on it. So <laughs> there's remnants. Yes, there is. Well, um, if you like cornucopias, hey. you're in uh, you're in for it because today's episode of Friday Night Live is a cornucopia of of weird. That what is... a transition. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> I, I deserve something for that one because we're about to go into alien jellyfish here. That's yeah, what we're do we, do. Why don't we show a trailer and then when we get back, we'll just jump right into the alien jellyfish and all the good stuff that we're talking about. And actually, there's multiple jellyfishes drone alien ufo things seen all over the world actually we're gonna get we're gonna show some of those so let's That's show a trailer good. and then we'll get back who is the mad butcher of kingsbury run the cleveland torso murders are some of the most gruesome killings that have ever taken place in america some believe it was worse than jack the ripper's crimes On September 5th, 1934, this small forsaken neighborhood that probably would have faded away into oblivion etched its name in history. And the weird part is, is that there were very suspicious circumstances revolving around the suspects, which adds even more mystery to these horrible crimes. Little did they know at the time that this would end up becoming the biggest investigation in the Cleveland Police Department's history. Because this is an Edge of Wonder Halloween special, and I promise we'll try to make you laugh through this dark topic. All 
All right, you guys, you can find that over on our rise.tv platform. And uh, yeah, kind of a really incredible true crime series that we actually that we did. The Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. Um, I didn't even know about this uh, prior to doing this. So, um, well, if it's going to be weird, it's probably in Ohio. That is true. You know, I was just I was just listening Ohio. to something today where they found like tools, Egyptian tools in southern Ohio near Cincinnati, which people don't not like surprised. to talk about it. It's not being publicized, but it's the idea is that somehow the Egyptians were here as well. Pretty cool. I would believe it. Yes. All right. This jellyfish, what is going on with this? So everyone's been talking about this alien jellyfish. Uh, so there, excuse me, there was a, so this is it here. This looks like a scene in Star Wars right there. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the alien or the, the, the pro. Sorry. Are we in the water or above ground here? Cause that looks above ground. So this is above ground. So it's, fl it's, fl it's, it's hovering. It's flying. Yeah. It's and then it, and hovering it, jellyfish. And it looks like it's, so I don't know. There, there was some, there's a little bit debate on whether the, I don't think this is a, this could be infrared, but whatever is happening with this, it's changing its heat. Uh, uh, like the heat signal it's, it's giving off is changing, which is why it looks like it starts becoming transparent from what's being recorded. So one, the question is, is this thing like, um, like some kind of cloaking device on it that's, you know, hiding from something. So it looks like it originally it was said that it was going <laughs> over. Yeah. I thought this is hilarious. <laughs> the real thing that we're seeing right now. Dude, so I guess it like was the best drawing ever. <laughs> did this like a little kid. It's so good. It was pretty funny. I thought it was really good. So Jeremy Corbell came out with this footage. I guess it was shot in uh, 2018 in Iraq above a military base. And this is it was captured on official camera. Now, this is like one of like a news piece kind of talking about it. You can you can you can play this, Lindsay. We can listen to it. You can, you can turn up the volume by a journalist named Jeremy Corbell, who claims that it was buried by the intelligence community. Look at this. He calls this thing, uh, whatever craft it is, jellyfish. You can see why, because it floats with like dangling appendages. Um, the footage was shot at night, and I'm quoting that they used thermographic forward-looking infrared imagery. But interestingly, the object could not be seen with regular night vision gear. And some of the troops who were at the base wow. weren't even aware it was up there. Um, others were told to hunt it down. And the coolest part of it all is that it switches colors. It goes from this dark to mm -hmm. like almost invisible wow. and see-through and white um, as it glides, indicating that that should be a temperature change more than likely from hot to cold to hot to cold. And then it just disappears into a body of water for 17 straight minutes until pew, it reemerges and shoots off into the sky at a rate of speed that was so high it couldn't be documented with the technology we actually have here on Earth. Wow. Yeah. Okay, you can stop it, Lindsay. So, Corbell. <sighs> Weird stuff, right? <clears throat> Dude, we've never seen anything like that before. No, we've. We, I, I mean, except for the literally the drobe, w w w the empire. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's <laughs> one <of those> drones. <laughs> so, like, this is one of those drones, like the the scouting drones or something that they send out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it really, actually, it does look like that. So I think the two things that are super fascinating about this is the fact that one, uh, you, it wasn't being picked up on regular night vision cameras. So they had to have a thermal camera to pick it up. So this thing was there and no one could see it, meaning it definitely was cloaked in some way. So then it even like shifts colors again, like she said. So I'm thinking it's probably, and maybe it's like, phasing in and out you know so you know and it, it's too is like that looked biological more than it did technological you know what i mean it's true and believe it or not th there's been a couple of these things have been recorded on um, all around the world different parts of the world the last couple decades 
So one of them was in Poland, actually. So Lindsay, can you show this? Uh, well, okay. Well, she there's a there's a video. Um, well, okay. Before we show that, why don't you show? You have it up right now. There's a video of Jeremy Corbell kind of talking about the background of this a little bit. Look like a traditional UFO, like a sphere or a saucer, but this shape has been seen since the beginning of UAP or UFOs. They call it the jellyfish UAP. Super weird looking. It is very Third Star Wars looking. Or like District Nine. Form. Yeah, District Nine. That's a good. Wow, that's a really good analogy. You, you can turn so up the, the volume. Object just went to white, and you'll see it going from white to black, white to black, and that's basically showing the heat differential. So it's going like hot and cold, hot and cold. The problem was the optics platform was jammed. These individuals who target with these platforms, they can shoot out an Al-Qaeda tire at 27 miles away, but not being able to lock it was one of the first signs that something's weird. They couldn't lock it. I was That's able to find direct eyewitnesses and corroborate that this event did happen. When individuals would target in on it with the optics, the way it was described, each of these hanging things, they were stiff, like they weren't moving. They had a geometric form, like scales, what was said to be scales, like an armor. There were also people with night vision who were out and they were tasked to, to go look for it, couldn't see it on the night vision, only in the thermal spectrum could it be seen. But anything that looks like that appears to have a payload, that's a big deal. It could be dangerous. So these are high priority. But so that's a good point. Is it carrying is, something or is it just part of the ship? You know, it looks like it had a payload of some yeah. sort. Yeah. I, I mean, the other question is is this some kind of like alien thing? The fact that it's flying over a military area, I mean, it could it be like some kind of top secret military secret, was, you know, black ops some kind of drone program that's a drone that's literally doing some kind of maybe, um, yeah. All right, wait, wait, I got a theory. I got a theory. Yeah. At some point, somebody realized if you want to go undetected, then whatever technology you build needs to be biological because you'll go undetected. If you're biological, if you're technological and you're metal, you're going to be tracked. Right. So why not make some, some kind of technology that's biological that hovers and that can do things and send signals or something like that. I don't know. Just a theory. Yeah, no. It could, and it, and it, that could be like, uh, I mean, like extraterrestrial in, in nature doing that or maybe like military, you know. But when I started looking into this, I was shocked to find that this isn't the only occurrence of this yeah, yes. jellyfish thing. So here it is in Poland. And then we have one in California and another one in Turkey. So Okay. All right. One. Let's let's see these. Where is it? But you can see that. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So this this was um that is true. You can see it. But maybe this is Poland. Uh, so this is in Poland. Um this came out uh this is this is kind of old. I think this is like 4 or 5 6 years old maybe. Uh you know, and some people have suspected this is just like a balloon, you know. So that, that's what's kind of hard about these things. Like, unfortunately, I don't really have any other information. It's just like, wow, you know, somebody saw this in the sky in Poland and filmed it. So that was not a balloon. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, this one is recorded in California in 2009, and it was along uh, Highway 41. Um, and what's weird about this one. Got a guy parachuting? Whoa, did it just disappear? That's what it looked like. And there's like things coming off of it too. And and the thing is, is like, you know, you could argue that this is a, well, maybe it's like a bug on the screen or something like that. No, it just disappears. Look. Boom. Oh, yeah. Just disappeared. So um, we'll do it one more time and then we'll show the, the other one. The other one is more fascinating to me. Because of where where it 
takes place. Hmm. See, there's those like things around it, and then yeah, they disappear too. Yeah. And like, you know, with this kind of stuff, it's hard to say. It could, you know, you have to throw it out there. It could be photoshopped. Um, we don't know for sure. But this next one happened in Turkey 17 years ago. And I found a, they're all speaking uh, Turkish. So we're not going to understand what they're saying. But I did find a kind of like a, tra like a summary translation. You can just play this, Lindsay. Um, and at first I thought the same thing where i'm like wait what am i looking at here you know this just looks like some kind of weird balloon but then things start kind of changing with this and um and it's the same it's almost this exactly the oh, same yeah. thing of what we were seeing with with the especially the california one and also this weird like jellyfish thing so the reason why, so in Turkey, this, this was like a huge phenomenon in Turkey when this happened. The reason why is because I found out the area that this is in is a very remote area and there's not a lot of people that live in that area at all. And it's actually very hard to get to. And um, the guy who made the video, and I'm not really quite sure how they made the video, but uh, there was only like a few villagers that were in the area and they kept seeing these flashing lights and they, they also described uh, little men walking. And so they went there to uh, see if what they can to film it. And this is what they got. Um, most, they said most people were very scared and shocked uh, who was in the area when they saw this. Now at this point right here, yeah, and these these guys talking, these are kind of like ufologists, experts in Turkey, and they did they did try to have on some like people like Nick Pope and things like that to talk about it, but they all declined. They wouldn't. They didn't want to talk about it. So no way. That yeah. makes it weirder because Nick Pope will talk about anything. Yeah, I know. So it does make it kind of weird. So yeah, it's strange, to say the least. And I guess this this was going on for like, you know, day and night, this thing. And, you know, and then like some of the mainstream media was like, oh, they're just balloons, you know. Dude, but, if that thing was flying over Texas, it would have gotten shot down. Yeah. But because they're they're speaking in Turkish, they're actually they're actually talking about why they believe it's not a, a balloon. That that's the conversation that they're having right here. Um, because the one guy is kind of pointing that out. And then this, this guy is kind of like saying why he believes it's not a balloon and something different. And they're talking about the area that it's in and the people who filmed it and they had all the background on it and everything. So yeah, it's really weird, right? <laughs> so yeah, it, yeah, that's, that's super weird. Like that's some of the creepiest uh, UFO footage we've seen in mm -hmm. a while. In a while, I mean, th this jellyfish UFO thing is, uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> when I saw it, I'm like, I don't even know what the heck to think about this. It's so weird. And then, but my instant thought was the, uh, the, um, the, you know, the, the probe drone from, from Star Wars. Like yeah. I, that was my instant thought. And that's what everyone started referencing. You know, it was like, oh yeah, it looks like the Imperial pro uh, probe drone drone drone. But, um, so yeah, I, I, I wish, you know, Jeremy didn't have too much information uh, other than what he just said. I mean, it came from, I guess, a trusted source happened in 2018 over Iraq and there's not much more information about where it came from or, you know, what it is, but the fact that it's kind of like, I think it's been recorded by the military may, to me, makes it a little bit more credible. Even I have to be honest, like, you know, sometimes I feel like Jeremy kind of, he, he likes the attention that these things, you know, he, he likes to bring things out, even though he has been in the military himself and that's why certain yeah. people trust him. But, um, you know, <laughs> well, it is one of these is. things. It's hard to tell, you know what I right. mean? But it is interesting right. that we found other videos of a similar phenomena. That is what's so fascinating about it. Um, 
And like I said, I, I've never seen these videos before. There's some other videos. Now that I now that I saw this, I think there's even been stuff that we've shown on the show that kind of looks similar. And most the media just kind of wrote it off as, oh yeah, those are definitely balloons because that's what's hanging down from it. And I think at the time I was just like, well, it is moving really slow. So yeah, it's probably a balloon, you know? But now I'm like rethinking all no, of that stuff. I'm sorry. <sighs> that really bothers like what balloon have you ever seen that just travels horizontally so, there was there was a, a famous case of this i think it was an it was a number one balloon and it was silver and it it, it was like around when the tic tac toe when the earth the tic tac toe sorry the tic tac ufo <laughs> tic tac toe it was around when the tic tac ufo came out and there was a uh, it, the media was blowing it up and there was a video that came out and it turned out it was just a, a number one balloon because somebody had like a high professional camera. They zoomed into on it and, and it was like, oh, yeah, it really actually is just a number one balloon that got loose. That was slowly floating away. And that was like yeah, one but floating, case. but not like floating is one thing. Yeah being blown around and stuff, but something that's just traveling that the exact, exact same thing. And it's not like blowing around in the wind. It's just that, like going its own thing. Yeah. That, that's when things are different. I agree. That's right. That. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, speaking of uh, UFOs and whistleblowers and all this stuff. Um, so, da I mean, David, so David Grush, he's been on the news a lot, man. I, yeah. I, I, my stance on him is, is a hundred percent like, you know, pro what he's for now. So if you don't know David, Gr I mean, David Grush was the, the I tried to convince you of that for so yeah, long. You, did, you, did, you, you were did. so resistant. I know I, I was just very like, you know, and all the stuff's coming out and who's kind of supporting it and what's going on. But I think that overall it, it's, it's just like, he just needed, he was just for anybody that was supporting his cause, I think. But um, so if you don't know, David Grush is the whistleblower that came out that said that there was um, non-human biologics that they found in these crafts. And he was like the big whistleblower that came forward. So first, the main and also the mainstream media were kind of like promoting him in, in, in the beginning. And then they just started bashing this guy. Um, he was going to be on a, Joe, a interview with Joe Rogan and he canceled it. When, when was he going to um, be on? So, okay. There's two things. He was later on Joe Rogan and they, they talked about very specific things. It was basically, um, just like UFOs and aliens kind of thing. And that was November of 2023. But I guess earlier in 2023, when he first came out, he was, he, Joe Rogan, won him on the show and he canceled it due to um i'm trying to see what the exact quote yeah yeah like um, threats yeah due to basically just threats um well that's when it was more serious for him like he my understanding is he came out in response to his life being threatened and so when he, like the time when he came out when he first started talking was the most dangerous time i think yes so security security concerns is what he said that's that's the word wording he used security concerns and T, tmz did a, a documentary called ufo revolution and they actually interviewed Joe Rogan in this documentary. And then he, Joe Rogan is the one that, yeah, Grush was supposed to come on. And basically, like, he just canceled, like, right away, like, on the day he was supposed to show up. Yeah, but, he must have gotten some text messages basically saying yeah. things or something, you know? Right. And I think he came on the show later because at that point, he probably was, like... Yeah, he was already in front of Congress. It, like, yeah. it had calmed down a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he probably was, he, he toned down of what he was probably originally going to talk about, but, um, yeah, so yeah, that was, uh, the most, I'd have to say that was probably the most interesting thing that happened in 2023, almost one of the most interesting things, like to actually have a whistleblower come out, you know? Yeah. And it, yeah. The same, because at the same time, um, Eric Hecker was coming out. Yeah. Eric Hecker was coming out and, um, we had, uh, 
Oh, Stephen Greer had his whistleblowers come forward too. That that were just like mind blowing. Yeah, Eric Hecker was a part of that. That's right. Yeah, Eric Hecker. Was, yeah, it was a part of that, and Michael Stratton and all that. So, yes, and um, there's a actually, and David Grush was supposed to, or he, there was a secret meeting that he held in New York City, uh, and I didn't know about this. And I guess it was a secret group that he um, gave to investors, CIA and FBI officials, tech um, uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, some other like um, prominent individuals in the community and some other wealthy people. And I guess it was put on by a uh, um, one of the the Coinbase advisor, uh, John. Uh, John something and this other guy who's an attorney. So these two guys put this on and secretly had Grush there to give up this meeting. And I guess he reportedly talked about 40 foot long UFOs that were larger on the inside than it was on the outside. And that could manipulate space and time. I've heard this. Yeah. Multiple times over the last year, these like UFOs that are like, you know, we grew up in these like with these children's shows where you'd walk into a like someone would walk into a small place and it would be like this huge room. It's always been like a really interesting concept. I can't think of the movies that have had that. It's like. What movies was it like Harry Potter definitely had one of those situations like you go into a small. Oh, well, yeah, 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 it was Harry Potter. And uh, but there were others when we were even yeah, younger. Right. There, there, there is, I'm trying to remember too. I do remember that because Harry Potter isn't the only one that had that where they were like, you know, tent is small yeah. on the inside and they walk in and it's just like massive, like <laughs> huge house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Grush also said at this meeting, I guess that he said just one of these crafts have enough energy to power 70,000 homes uh, a year. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that is pretty intense. Yeah. Alice in Wonderland was another one of them. Thank you, Colleen, who's watching over on YouTube. <laughs> Doctor Who. Doctor Who did that. That's right. Doctor Who, that was the other one, yeah. All right. Well, um, okay, last one that we have here, we have um the giant alien on a hill. <laughs> have you seen this yet? Um I I don't know, maybe I don't know what to think about this. Um we'll kind of yeah, why don't you show this first? I think there's a video. One of these is a video. Yeah, this is the video. Why don't we show this? I mean, I guess the question this is, could be a human. Yeah. How? And like, we don't know what the depth perception is here. Sometimes that can be really, really, um, uh, you know, distorted so that it's actually yeah. much closer. It looks like it's a giant, but it's really just like a human or a hiker. Yeah. Yeah, so they're saying it's they they're saying so these are two an island two miles off the coast of southern Brazil, and you know everyone kind of went in a frenzy after what happened in Miami, basically, and that's what everyone is trying to figure out whether these are real like aliens, giants, or just like an optical illusion. Uh, how, optical illusion. However, yeah, so and they're saying like like the arm does look really 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 long. That's the only thing I would say. Like, that is weird. It looks like it's almost like. Well, no, because half of his legs are covered by those, the grass or the bush. True. So the proportion just could be half of his legs are below that. And then that's just how long his arm is coming down to his hips, you know? Yeah. Someone's like a an, an Gumby, an inflatable Gumby. So there was a soccer star, Peter that Crouch. Like a hiker with a backpack on right there. Did you just notice? And he's got like a walking stick. Yeah. So, yeah. You know now watch yeah. when he turns to the side. He's got a backpack on like very clearly. 
because he turns to the side and then they zoom out and it looks like he's got a backpack on. Yeah. Ready? Here. Um, yeah, it does. Here it comes. Look. So he moves his arm and then to the side. Boom. Hiker. Backpack. See what I mean? Mm hmm. Well, it turns out this guy named Peter Crouch, he's a um, soccer slash football player. Uh, and he came out saying that he, it was him on top of the hill <laughs> that him and his wife were having a vacation and he went up there and was just roaming on top of the hills. And then someone took the photo or the video and he said, um, he's like, he's, and he's six foot seven inches. So he is a tall dude. So Six, but, seven is tall, but that's like, it's why was that him? What are the chances of that being him? That's yeah, weird. I know. He said, we're on a family holiday. Please respect our privacy at this time. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. When and why did you stuff. respond, dude? Yeah, I know. Really? It's like, that was me, but I'm not going to say anything else about it. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's any more information, but it was, that's all he said. That's all he said. He said, he said, we went on vacation. We were up on the Hill around the same time as this was captured. So he's like, I, I believe it is me. So I don't know. <sighs> it's hard to say with these things. Yeah. But anyway, this was making its rounds. So, all right, you guys, we're going to show another trailer and we get back. We have Baba Vanga's uh, predictions for what did you call me? Baba Yaga. Sounds good. Hey. <laughs> Have you heard of fantastic floods wiping out humanity? How about different creation stories in different cultures and religions? Then there are gods, different beings, corruption, and the downfall of man and fantastic tales that make up creation stories across cultures, like the most famous one, the Garden of Eden. But the biggest question everyone has is, where was the Garden of Eden? And when we went looking for the answer, we came across places that were everything from reasonable to the wildest and most out of this world places that people have proposed. You're gonna love number one. So join us on this Edge of Wonder series as we travel across the Americas, the deserts of Africa, the places you'd seriously never expect, and so much more. Let's start out with a place you would never think the garden would be in a million years. Jackson, Missouri. Wait. What? <laughs> why? <laughs> You're going to find out why. If I lived in Jackson, Missouri, I would create a restaurant called the Garden of Eaton. <laughs> and I would totally capitalize on that. <laughs> so smart, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that's really funny. I wonder if there's a restaurant called the Garden of Eaton. <laughs> there needs to be. I'm sure it's a brand somewhere. Somebody. Oh, ah, man, that would be that's such a good brand to do. Uh, well, th those episodes are on uh, Rise.TV. If you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you. We've got tons and tons of videos up there, all this stuff that we've researched. It's a great way to support the show uh, and help us out. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you can join our community, which is awesome. We're hanging out with them right now. We are. Yes, we are. All right. Um, Baba Vanga. So if you don't know who she is, she was a um, Bulgarian mystic who was born blind uh, she died in 1996, I believe, and she has been predicting things with an 85% accuracy rate. That's so, right. Yeah, some of the things she predicted we're gonna we'll, is like Donald some certain things about Donald Trump, Barack Obama, 9/11, a uh, bunch of other stuff, uh, world events, and all kinds of things. And she actually saw her own death six years before she passed away, which occurred on that exact date. Uh, August 11th, 1996. Yeah. And she has, she predicted things up until 5079, the year 5079. So it's just weird to think about. 
<laughs> like, well, I can't even picture like what would happen in like next 50 years, let alone. Don't like, you know the world's going to explode this year? 200 man. years. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, well, I'd say what we don't have to, we'll go right into what she predicted for 2023. So, you want to read some of these, Rob? So, here, so I thought we would go back a year to see what she predicted for 2023 and we can kind of see what 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 took place and then we'll get into 2024 so let's see are we we're doing what she predicted for 2023 right yeah okay so she predicted earth's orbit to change course baba vanga predicted that in 2023 the earth would experience a change in its orbit somehow although the details of such were not given no matter what that change may be, it could have devastating consequences if it does, in fact, occur. Yeah. All right. Number uh, next one is bioweapons. Vanga is also claimed to have predicted that a big country will carry out bioweapon studies on humans, which would result in the deaths of thousands of people. So, yeah, I wonder if that, that has that something to do uh, with that which cannot be mentioned. I know. Because, I mean, you know, publicly, no country would say they did that. But mm -hmm. behind closed doors, like China spe specifically, I'm thinking of. Yeah. Wow. So 2023, also nuclear explosion. Among her many predictions for 2023, it's claimed that Baba warned of a potential nuclear power plant explosion. This eerie prediction comes after her alleged prediction of the Chernobyl disaster. This prophecy will come as alarming as worries grow among country leaders over a nuclear disaster in ukraine so that was this is written in the beginning of 2023 because i wanted to see like how how that was described at the beginning of 2023 you know right Four. so okay so the other thing was solar tsunami another prediction although rather vague is the arrival of a massive solar storm on a scale never before seen on the planet Indeed, a strong geomagnetic storm was observed within th with 30 days left to spare of 2023, measuring at a grading of G3, solar storms graded on a scale of 1 to 5. So this was a, was a 3. Okay. Lab births. The final claim for 2023 involves the end of natural human births, which she predicts will be banned. That's and 2023? Yeah. That's a tall order, dude. That's like full, that's full dictatorship across the entire globe. I, I know. And that's what makes me like kind of freaked out because I, I, you know, I, I believe that's what they're, you know, eventually that's their final goal, but who knows, you know, maybe it would have happened. Maybe. I mean, they're definitely working on it for sure. You know, kind of, and kind of going back. Um, so she predicted the seven or September 11th attacks and what she wrote specifically she said horror horror the american brethren will fall after being attacked by the steel birds the wolves will be howling in a in a butt in a bush the innocent blood will be gushing and i just found it really weird because bush was president at the time you know oh man true yeah good call yeah, yeah. and the steel birds like yeah, it's super weird so that's that's one of the things that she predicted and um the assassination of gandhi as well even uh so uh, not she's gandhi been... um it was a woman what's oh. her name indra gandhi I indira don't... gandhi indira gandhi oh yeah i don't actually don't know who that is now i should know but i don't i'm sorry <laughs> well, this is anyway for, is this for 2023 as well uh no 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 that that was like things that she predicted that came true okay and then then we have uh, okay that's that's that woman that she's talking about that was assassinated all right so we have the 2024 predictions from um from her and um see i'll just read a couple of these and you can finish it off rob so the end of vladimir putin so she predicted that Russia's president is right to fear for his life as the mystic foresaw an assassination attempt. Um, the, 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 I guess what she predicted is that it won't, wouldn't be an international agent, but someone from its own country. Well, I mean, so we all know how corrupt and weird it is over there. I mean, yeah, makes sense that there's some infighting among their little, little bitty inner cabal or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
So there's also, um, she predicted a massive economic crisis, which we're pretty much in, I would say. Which we're, which we're pretty <laughs> much prepping for. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting uh, every day for that stock. That's, you know, that stock exchange totally. Yes. Fail. She did predict a uh, economic power or a shift in economic power from the West to the East and escalating debt levels, which it's kind of happening with, I mean, in some aspects with China, but I don't believe that's fully going to happen, but we'll get into China with Taiwan here pretty soon too. The other thing she predicted for 2024, alien encounters. So jellyfish, um, that, dude. <laughs> aliens or alien related events in the future is waiting for us and terrifying weather events. Um, you know, and I mean, that's not really that shocking because we, we've, we've already been experiencing that already, you know, so, so you, you want to go from there? You can read some of these other ones. Yeah. Ter terrifying weather events. For, you got no, that just, one. Yeah, I just said that. Okay, one, yeah. yeah. So that, that is weird, though, because I mean, we're seeing a lot of stuff with with earthquakes and volcanoes already. We all are over, like at I the mean, end already of 2023, is... right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that is actually kind of notable. Um, so these terrorist attacks on Europe, Europe is supposedly set for an increase, increased terrorist attacks in 2024. The clairvo clairvoyant allegedly warned. No, which. Further, well, yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, well, I was just going to say no further details have been shared about which country may be hit or when it may happen. Well, wasn't it, was it Sweden that just the, the, their leader just announced the prepare for war and everyone went crazy buying all the like toilet paper. Yeah. It was either Sweden or, um, mm, another <sighs> Netherlands. Um, yeah, no, Sweden. It is Sweden. Yeah, Sweden's defense ministry warns to brace for war sends public into a panic. So people went Sorry, crazy. Why are they sharing a photo of Ron DeSantis if we're talking about Sweden? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's trying to run for Sweden. That's your country's right here. <laughs> I think it's. I think they made a mistake there. Put the wrong I think video. it's just their featured video on the page. Yeah, it probably is. Whatever. Still kind of weird. But either way, um, yeah, I thought that was already weird. So okay, go ahead. Once. Yeah, then we've got a surge in cyber attacks. So multiple governments have suffered exhaustive cyber attacks in 2023, spending millions on protecting themselves. Medical and technological breakthroughs. Thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom. Vongo reportedly said that there will be new treatments for incurable diseases. According to Sky History, this will include Alzheimer's and cancer. The mystic also predicted that there will be a major breakthrough in quantum computing. Which is so weird because quantum weird. computing didn't exist when she well, was. And, dude, she was blind from birth. So what is she actually seeing and how does she know that it's quantum computing? Uh, yeah, that, that's super interesting. So some other predictions. She said in 2022 that a quote unquote dragon um, which so many people believe is now China would seize humanity and that three giants will unite. Some, this is a quote from her quote. Some people will have red money. I see the numbers hundred five and many zeros. So in what happened in 2022 was India, Russia, and China came together and red money refers to the hundred yuan and the 5,000, um, the 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 root ru rubble notes rubles rubles sorry the ruble notes so both of them are in red so that is really weird weird so yeah she oh, also oh, oh, what were you saying or, yeah 45th president here they have something about trump right it's weird yeah there was a couple things but she did say that a mysterious disease will will struck down the 45th president leaving him death and cause brain trauma <laughs> but um that didn't actually happen but what's weird is that at that time that's when covid came out you know and then trump did get covid during that time too so but one positive thing she said she said that she made a general prediction at some point in the century life in the cosmos will be discovered and suddenly it will be clear how life on earth first appeared people will get in touch with their spiritual siblings from other worlds that's a cool prediction <laughs> highly doubtful 
Well, I mean, I, I believe something like that would happen after the cleaning out of whatever is supposed to happen will happen, you know, but I do think something like that will happen. So, um, I'm, yeah, I, I think that's what we have, you know, something positive to look forward to as a human race. And I think we will find the answers of, you know, our whole history. It's just that, you know, obviously also, it can't happen when you have all the evil things. It seems here. like nothing that she predicted in 2023 happened. Maybe we're on a different timeline. <laughs> well, that's yeah. The, you know, that that's the thing about these the predictions. timeline where Leia is speaking British. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it, it, it may like... You know, I think that's where the, you know, just because someone sees something doesn't necessarily mean, it, oh, oh, it didn't happen. So it's not true. Um, you know, maybe the year was, they had the year wrong or yeah, maybe it did actually happen another time so, space. And we just switched over now. Our, our community here on Rise is saying that she did not, she was not born blind. Although we said that at the beginning, she was like, I thought she, that she, she lost it somehow later. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought she was born blind. I'm sorry, you guys. If she it was she, early childhood. Yeah, I was gonna say then it must have been really early childhood. Still pretty amazing that she would be able to indicate something like a metal bird. Like she'd know what that was. Like that's interesting. Well, this is also translated to English, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But you know what's really weird about that? That's the quote from Nostradamus that people said that was in his book, and it's not in the mainstream media. And Snopes were like uh, discrediting it, saying, no, it was nothing about two steel birds. Lo and behold, it was her. Mm. So this is the problem that I have with Snopes, because it's like they're, they're, they won't correct it when it's like it's just like, no, this is false. And it's like, well. Well, well, no, okay, yes, it's false about Nostradamus, but it's true about her. There was a prediction about this, you know? Right. So, anyway, Snopes, obviously, it's a such an operation, you know. Project. Oh, yeah. Operation, Snopes. what is it? Mockingbird? Yeah, all of that. It's way worse than that. It Snopes really is. is. so bad. <laughs> it really is. It's actually borderline ridiculous. And, like, actually, most of... Most everything out there right now, the fact that everyone oh, makes fun of people for bringing things forward that could be of concern and then glue themselves to the news as if it's like the news is telling the truth. It's like you're literally making fun of yourself right now. Well, the if thing that really gets me about Snopes and Facebook and all this fact checking and everything, it's like, oh, this is um, partly false. Well, then that means it's mostly true. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you can't have something that's it's like partly cloudy it's either partly cloudy yeah, or mostly I, sunny i think twitter <laughs> more appropriately handles that where it, it, they like they use the term adding context and then they it's like you can take it or leave it you know what yeah I mean? yeah yeah the community notes those are the best things because it, it's just like hey we're just trying to report factual here what's going on we're not, we don't have an agenda behind it so all right Talk about our final thing, China and Taiwan here before we switch over to the weirder news. And we got some great weirder news for you guys. But um, so briefly, why this is so important is because China, Taiwan is about ready to choose a new president. And of course, China is making very big oh, yeah. threats against Taiwan. And um, well, they're stuck in like a uh between a rock and a hard place right now yes. from what i understand yeah that's kind of my understanding too although you know i think they're they're gonna have obviously the u.s and all these other countries backing them if anything if china were to do anything whatsoever but she well, basically well, will she, they though they may not in 2024 with all of this election stuff going on you know what i mean yeah i i think though that I mean, even Biden already said that, you know. OK, so so sorry. Check this yeah. out. Then if the pro Chinese Communist Party, CCP party wins in Taiwan, this could have ripple effects on the global markets, on the high tech industry and in particular on the trade war between the United States oh. and China. And if the anti CCP party wins, this could spark new military threats from the CCP and a potential new war exactly. as the, the regime is basically vowed to take Taiwan, even if it means using force. 
So yep. that's kind of what's going on there. So it's like really, yeah. it's a really, really, really weird situation in Taiwan right now. Yeah, that's a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and so you know, people in Taiwan are like, well, well, what do we do? But you know, I think most people in Taiwan are like, no matter what, we will not bow to China. So they obviously want to elect a leader that won't that's not being controlled by the CCP. And Xi Jinping has made threats like basically you have to like you have this guy has to win the election or else, you know, essentially. Mm -hmm. So um but I, I that's why I just feel like it's just not gonna happen. I I I mean I don't know. I just I, don't I, think it will happen. I think I think there is gonna be some changes that happen to Taiwan. I think it's it's gonna be a perfect storm of an election year and China just being sneaky and doing some stuff. But uh, but uh, like look at it this way, or we could look at it this way, like you know, in they did the same thing in Hong Kong, right? But Hong right. Kong didn't really change that much. It's like um, yeah, but but I mean think about full on mainland China. And then think right. about Hong Kong and it's like Hong Kong is still not like full China. Do you know what I mean? Right. Well, so the people are still holding on to a bit of what they had. So and, you know, the people in Taiwan are very, very gentle, peaceful people. They are. It. They're not going to do. Like not much would happen even if that did happen. So I don't know that it would make that big of a difference anyway. Well, I, I it depends. It really, I agree. I agree. It depends. Know, there's so many factors involved and in, in what would happen. The thing with, I think the thing with Hong Kong is that a lot of the businesses in, in Hong Kong, the big businesses have already bowed to the CCP and they're all working together anyway already. It's the people of Hong Kong that are like, you know, our freedoms would be taken away in the future if this continues on. With Taiwan, I think it's a very different situation because they're not part of, you know, they're not connected to China. So it's like, what would actually happen? How would this look? And I, I know the people of Taiwan are very worried about this. And so, um, yeah, I mean, but sure. what would what would happen? You know, that's been a big question. How would this look and what would happen if if Xi Jinping did take over Taiwan? So, well, it will make the current administration look really bad. Yeah, that happened. The yeah. thing that bothers me more than anything else is that um, the United Nations will not recognize Taiwan's flag as yeah, their why? Oh, I wonder why. Yeah, it's like, hmm. You know, I know a lot of people don't know that, like, and even in America, I don't even know if Taiwan is really, they look like, at it as their own country. So obvious what's going on there. Yeah. I just, the politics needs to be wiped off of the face of the earth. Seriously. <laughs> like, it's literally the worst thing ever. Like when did it ever work? It failed in Rome. It failed in Greece. It's failed all over the world. And it's put us in the situation we're in now. It doesn't work. Like it, people suck. And they always try to get more. They they always try to take more power than they should have. And it just ends up being this like craziness that we're in now. Mm -hmm. I don't think there isn't necessarily an answer, but maybe like some kind of constitutional monarchy might work. You're still going to have a hell of a time leading a comfortable life here. No matter what you do, it's the human earth. It's a human world. I mean, you know, you're not. I don't know. It's just crazy out there. Yeah, it is. It is. So we'll see. I mean, uh, we'll probably be talking more about what's happening with Taiwan as it gets closer to their elections and, you know, really who wins this thing and what China's going to do. It's yeah, because this whole topic has been uh, it's been on the mainstream media a lot. They're just keep talking about, you know, this whole thing with Taiwan and China because Xi Jinping has made like very direct threats now, like literally like you need to hire this guy, you know, so. Yeah, it's like you're just a shell of a man, she. <laughs> you're not even a he, she. Your name is she. <laughs> what are you? Still want to do like a whole joke about that. We, was, that's really funny. But I mean, then of course you, you know, because yeah, I mean, they're still uh, murdering and torturing their own people, whether it's like, you know, Falun Dafa practitioners or the um, underground Christians or Uyghurs. I, I mean, this is, I think this he, is the thing that, that, that people failed as a president so hard yeah man he could have changed all of this but could he's have. like he's just emperor she now you know emperor but, who 
<laughs> for Pooh. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. But yeah, I mean, so this is like a big thing because I think this is the other aspect. You know, Taiwan is a very free country. So, you know, if China does take over, I think that's what everyone's worried about. Like what kind of changes would happen? What kind of changes would happen to like b religious beliefs even? Um, this is, and, 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 you know, you mentioned like Hong Kong, since they've gotten taken over, there's a lot more suppression with these religious beliefs, you know, in Hong Kong, uh, the police are, because the police are working directly now with the CCP. So that's, that's where the danger is. It's you know? like more so it's more yeah. on edge for sure, but we're not seeing persecution like we're seeing in China there. That is true. That yeah. is true. But, um, and I'm not defending yeah. them. I'm just saying, yeah, no, no, it's, I it's think I mean, with yeah. Taiwan and all the people there and the culture that they've developed over however many years, like, I just don't, I don't think it will. I'm hope. Okay. This is my hope. Is that it won't it won't it won't affect them too much if something like this goes down? I, I hope so too, and hopefully it won't at all. And I, like I said, I I do want to say that maybe the military will, uh, you know. I all right, I, you guys. I hope so. I hope so too. Yeah, let's get over there. Yeah, we're gonna jump over to Rise uh, TV. So we're gonna leave Rumble, Facebook, Ganjing World, and head over there. So be sure to join us. Um, for just twelve ninety nine a month, uh, you support what we do, and you'll get to ask us your questions during live Q and A. And also, every Fridays we have the weirdest news of the week, and this week we have some really crazy stuff from everywhere from an ancient carved disc that had a map of the stars on it to um, to uh, Mark Zuckerberg raising cattle. Uh, cross caught a stir on that. <laughs> <laughs> Disney is facing backlash for um, for a company that they're suing, small little company, and of course we have the um, the underground uh, Jewish um, caves, whatever you want to say, that were found. So we're going to get into who all knows that. what's going on there. And like, what the <laughs> all right, and we'll we see you guys. Two week trial that you can use for checking out rise tv it's just 97 cents if you go to rise.tv slash trial thank you Lindsay. yes all right well we'll see you over there on rise.tv war conquest death most world war ii historians will highlight the politics of the time but gloss over the truth behind Hitler's quest for power. The blood-spattered trail the Nazis smeared across the globe cannot be forgotten even today. But what if details were lost in the aftermath of the manic effort to create a Third Reich? Or what if they were left out of the history books on purpose? What if the Nazis were searching for something else? particular artifacts Hitler had researched feverishly in his darkest days. Objects so extraordinary, he believed they held the answer to world domination. Objects that had the power to change the course of history itself. These were the relics of power. One relic was most crucial to the Nazis' plans, one that brought together all the relic mysteries, but was a mystery itself. Because it was missing and contained a secret map. The Ghent Altarpiece.